Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and particularly, this goes to the gentlemen. And particularly, this goes out to the brothers. All right, here in America, in particularly. All right, today's segment, I would like to talk about black men traveling, getting a passport. Okay, when I say this, I just found out, I did a research on this, and I found out that only 22% of African Americans total have passports with African American men at the very least to have a passport unless they were in the military or they had a job at one time where they had to travel out of the United States. Okay? There's a lot of myths about brothers who don't travel. Okay? One, they got a lot of brothers who are scared to fly. Okay? Alright, that's probably the biggest one in particular that 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 um that I came across. Well, I am kind of too scared. I don't want to get on no plane in my crash. Let me tell you something, white folks have put that, put that in our head back in the 80s. All right, when all the planes were crashing, when these 737s and, and um, 707s and everything like that were crashing all over the place, and, you know, they all started saying, oh, no, a black man should not travel. You know, get on the plane, it's going to fall out the sky. Get on the plane, it's going to blow up in the air. That's just, just the one way, you know, I don't want to die. Well, look, guess what? That was the same way with me. I didn't want to get on the plane. I was always scared. Man, the plane's going to crash. Okay, well, you know what? If God made me go out that way, oh well, hopefully I, you know, and I'll be be with the be at the hands of the Lord, okay. But you cannot let fear stop you from seeing the world, okay. That is the basically what drew me to face my fear. Get out there, all right. Get on that plane, all right. Don't let fear stop me from seeing the world. Stop me from broadening my horizons, learning new cultures and everything like that, okay? Well, you know, moving on, once I got over the fear of flying, you know, it was now getting used to new cultures. Like, when I, I traveled to um, Puerto Rico, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to these places, but I wanted to get away from cultures that are influenced by the United States, okay? All right? Because being in Puerto Rico is like being in, you know, a, a part of the tropical United States. People are still influenced by this country. I wanted to go somewhere far away. So when I told people, I'm going to go to Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Oh, my God, I got the most negative. Re re people who never been there were trying to tell me how it is down there. Okay? That's another thing that brothers, you know, you can't listen to other people. You can't listen to their opinions. Especially on places they've never been to. Okay? Oh, they got AIDS down there. Oh, they got this, they got that. You're going to get robbed down there. Da, 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 right? I listened to people who've been down there. And they told me that it's completely, a totally different deal. Okay? And I, you know, and I decided to myself, sit to myself. You know, I actually made a bet with myself in a way. I wanted to get back with my ex-girlfriend. And if I got back with her that year. I think it was 2010. If I got back right that year, right, I'm not going to go to Brazil. Well, guess what? She made this choice for me. She wound up getting married, marrying somebody else. Now, you know, at first I was a little shocked, but then I said to myself, you know what? Maybe this is just God's way of telling me that I need to get down there. You made the bet with yourself, okay? You're not getting back with her, so go on down there. Before I went, I did my own research, okay? I did my own research on top of what people were telling me as well. All right, I found out a lot of things about Brazil. I found out Brazil is the blackest country outside of Africa. Something I didn't know. And I guarantee you a lot of people who are probably watching this video who lives here in the States probably don't know that either. All right? It's the first thing I get from people when I talk about Brazil. Oh, you're going out there to be with a Spanish woman. There are more black women, way more black women, black people, excuse me, down there than they are up here. We only make up 16, see the problem is in here in the US, the matrix, may I add, and we'll get into what I, what I mean when I say matrix later. But here in the matrix, AKA the US, all right, we are taught that we're the only black people on this side of the Western Hemisphere, this side of the, um, of the Western Hemisphere, okay? And that is not totally true. They are way, you know, the transatlantic slave trade started going from port from um, from Africa to Brazil. All right? All right? 
Over 10 million slaves were brought in that time frame, more than the United States, 10 times more than the United States. Okay, we only make up 16% of the United States population. Okay, and that's falling, okay, believe it or not. Okay, where Brazil is 51% black heritage, black descent. 51% of the biggest country in South America, okay, is black. Okay, something y'all need to look at, look up to, and find out more about. But um, like I was saying, when I told people I'm going to go to Brazil. Oh man, he going to oh, go, man, you don't want to do this. Oh no, 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 right? You know, and that right there was another thing that kind of told me that maybe I need to go because everybody, all the negativity, and everybody's telling me not to go. So it might be something down there that is that you know that's a draw. Okay, for me, all right, I didn't have a passport, all right, and as I did my own research, I also found out I also had to get a travel visa to go to Brazil, a Brazilian travel visa, so I went online, found out what I needed to do, okay, got my passport, and particularly now, when it comes down to that passport, and for the brothers, that's probably, to me, the most hardest thing to get, okay, out of the two documents I needed to travel, okay? You got to have no criminal record, all right? No child support, no tax liens and stuff like that. No uh, student loans. Now, if you do, there is a trick around it, okay? All right? And if you ever contact me on Facebook, I'll be, you know, leaving my Facebook information on my, on my own webpage and on my channel, okay? I'll tell you a way around that, all right? But, um... You gotta get the passport. Once you get past, get the passport. Getting the travel visa is easy. It's more tedious than anything. Okay, it's real easy. All right. Once you get your passport, you gotta get your information online. The best way to do it is get it online. All right. Have it printed out. Write it up. Okay. You know, your Brazilian visa application. What I mean. Okay. Get that online. All right. You know, get a headshot of you. You know, pretty good headshot, may I add. All right, and um, also one, I believe it's $140 U.S. Postal Money Order. May I, may I add, U.S. Postal Money Order only, okay? Cannot be any other money order. U.S. Postal, it means you have to get it at, the, um, at your um, U.S. Post Office, okay? All right, in my case, I had to travel to, from Philadelphia to New York, okay, to... The Brazilian consulate right there at 1185 America Avenue. And, you know, they had you go through the process. You have to bring your passport. You have to bring all the documents. You have to bring your um, $140 money order, your headshot, and everything like that. All right? Give it to them. They'll give you, they'll tell you to come back. They'll give you a date. The date's actually going to be 10 days away. You just got to come back to New York. And then pick up your passport, which will now be printed inside of, pick up your um, your visa, which will now be printed inside your passport. Okay, so now you're set to go. You're legal to go. Because you will not be able to get on that plane unless you have both of those documents, your passport and your visa. Okay, missing one of the two, you're not going to Brazil. Okay, all right. So, we, you know, we finally found a way to got ourselves together and ready to go. Like I said, I had all the doubters all the way. Oh, man, you shouldn't go. And even, even, even my own father, okay, who was probably one person I would hope that would encourage me to go, all right? His wife is foreign. His current wife is foreign, all right? My, my baby brother's mother is from El Salvador, okay? You know, he's up there telling me, oh, man, don't go, no, 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 don't go. You know, we're afraid somebody's going to kill you down there. You know, you should be afraid that somebody's going to kill me out here in these streets of West Philadelphia, okay? Let alone be me worried about me going to another city getting killed, okay? Now, don't listen to the doubters, all right? Close your ears to them, all right? If you set in your mind that you want to do this, you do it, just like I did. If I wanted to go to Brazil, I went, okay? I finally made it to Rio de Janeiro. Now, a buddy of mine who's been down here, okay, uh, he told me, in fact, uh, Mr. John, 
who I, a gentleman I've grown in, to uh, get to know. You've probably seen him in the video, um, documentary video of Frustrated Black Men in Brazil by my man Al Gries, right? That video also helped me, you know, also inspired me to go when I watched that video back in 2010. That's the one that really pushed my buttons to go there. All right. But, um, like I said, um, he, taught, he taught me a lot of stuff. And he said to me, he said, look, man, he said, the women down here, they're not like African-American women. All right. You got to leave all your thoughts about how you dated African-American women at the airport. You're in Brazil now. Okay. All right. So you got, these women are a totally different deal, okay? You don't have to walk on eggshells, okay? Just be yourself. Something that is real hard to do when you live here in the U.S. You have to play the role, okay? You have to go through mind games, especially with these African-American women. You have to, it's like, you have to be this, you have to be that, you have to be 50 Cent, you have to be Tyrese, you have to be, uh, you, you have to be a millionaire, you have to have a nice car, you have to, so many things you have to have to be with an African American woman. And the sad part about it is at the end, she winds up picking a hood rat anyway, but that doesn't have none of the things you have, okay? You know, but that's another story in another video, and don't worry, we're going to cover that topic too, okay? But um, while I'm there, right, I'm, I, met a good, I met a good woman, and you've probably seen her in my videos. Her name was Jana, all right? And, you know, we were, I met her actually six months before I got down there online, okay? All right, we talked, but talked online for a minute until we finally met up. She was real, okay, because you'll never know what you see online, or who you're talking to online. It turns out she was real. And, you know, we had a good time. For the time that I, I talked to her for about two or three years, and we even thought of even getting married at one time. But, you know, me being away too much, that's kind of what hurt our situation. And I wish her the best in anything she does and everything like that. And, you know, and, um, you know, and if there's a chance, maybe, maybe. But right now, even when I was down there, she and a couple other women that I was seeing on the side, they treated the black man like a king. I was not used to being around beautiful women. And they treated me like a king. And I did not have to walk on eggshells. Okay? You know, it was like, you know, even when I met up with the girl that first night, Janet the first night, I thought, once again, thinking like an American, I thought maybe I need to take her out to dinner, show her a good time. Don't expect the pussy tonight. Okay. Well, turns out she was cool with me taking her out to dinner and everything like that. But at the end of the night, you know what she really told me? She said, look, all I wanted to do was meet you and see if I was attracted to you. Okay. When I found out you were six foot five and you and everything like that, the next thing I want to know now is I'm if if I'm if you have the sexual goods to handle me. You took it out. I wanted to go back to your room that same night, but you wanted to go all these other places at first. Okay. So when she finally got me home, oh boy, it was like Six Flags of Great Adventure. She was all over me. Okay. So you know it was like, you know, it was, you know. These women, they're very sensual. Doesn't make her a hoe. She just seen what she wanted to get with and got it. Okay? No games, nothing. All right? These women are very sensual. Brazilian women are extremely sensual and either they're extremely straight to the point. They don't got no time to be wasting and playing games. Okay? If they like you, they like you. If they don't, they don't. Okay? But they are one, they're... Chances are, when you're an American or a foreigner completely, I, I think even the guy with the most weakest game could pull a very fine-looking woman, okay? All right, I mean, these women, they take care of themselves, all right? And then they take care of their man, all right? They believe they're not caught up into a U.S. culture, feminist culture, to where a man's got to come with this and come with that in order for you to be, in order for him to be with you and all this stuff. They, all they basically want is a man that loves them and them exclusively, 
Okay? They don't like cheaters. I will give you that. All right? And they, they, you know, they, you can feel that, you can feel that it's not phony. Because some, yeah, let me tell you something. Are, you're talking about a, a country where prostitution is legal, too. So you also got to be careful. You don't know who's a prostitute and who's not. But then after a while, you get to know a female, you know, she, you know, will show you, look, I'm not a hoe. I'm not this and that. You know, I want to be with you. I want to be with you. Okay? And, you know, it isn't about your money. Yeah, money helps. Come on. All around the world. That's just the name of the game. Cash rules everything around us. Okay? You know, but, you know, after a while, these women, they want a man. They like the essence of a man. So they want a good man. These Brazilian men down there make this game so easy for us Americans, you know, and particularly African Americans, because I was told that, you know, from women I dealt with, I was told that, that they would rather deal with an African American man than deal with a German, or deal with a white German, or a white Sweden, or a white Australian, all right, you know, or a white British. See, they got the money, let's be real. All right, they got the euro, they got the British pound. Okay, you got that thing going on. All right, but at the end of the night, them bulls ain't you know, you know, maybe for a minute, boom. Us American men, we coming down there. All right, we giving it to them strong, just like the black Afro Brazilian men do. But at the same time, we know how to treat them. We know how to treat them with class and treat them well and everything like that. And these women, they love it. And then they give out their passion. They'll show you how much they love you. You know. So I tell, I challenge brothers out there to stop being afraid of seeing, of dating outside of this U.S., outside of the Matrix. Go out. Get that passport. Okay. Travel. Okay. And particularly, start off with Brazil. Rio de Janeiro, the gateway to Brazil. All right. You know, come down here to Brazil. Come out down here to San Paulo. All right. You know, you know, ch just check out this country. All right. Because this country's on the way up. All right. I don't just, you know, when I came down here, I see a country that one is on the rise. It's not on the decline. Okay. And I do want a piece of this action while it's still on the rise. Why I still can get the piece of this action. Okay. You know. You know, especially with the World Cup and the Olympics coming in two years, this country is going to be on fire in the next 10 years. Okay? All right. So you want to start investing in this type of country. Okay? In fact, I mean, myself, I invested in, you know, a company that does a lot of business down in Brazil called Telex Freight. I'll get into that in another video too as well, you know, for gentlemen who want to learn how to make money online. But... Like I said, if you don't let fear stop you from traveling the world and learning new things and learning new cultures and maybe even falling in love in the process, don't let fear stop you, all right? Get that passport and travel the world, okay? Learn what's out here outside of the U.S., all right? Yeah, this is uh, Charles Tyler. You know, once again, you finally see the face. You know, to match all my little videos I had. Alright, and uh, we'll be talking a lot now. Alright? See you on the next video. Check you then.